my name is Daniela Verzen. I am a Croatian that currently lives in Canada for about four years now. I was a civil engineer before I started to completely switch my career, change it altogether, and become a developer. Um, I work for a company called The Score uh, for about a year now, and I also write um, articles on my blog, uh, danielaversion.com, which you can see right there. And also, um, you can find me like on Twitter um, at the version. I still call it Twitter. It's, I don't think I'll ever call it X. Uh, also, I write articles for Codeco, uh, the previous uh, Ray Vanderlich, as you all uh, get used to the name. Um, I am also a bootcamp uh, mentor uh, for this cohort, which is super exciting. And today I'm going to give you a presentation on string catalog, or how to localize your apps in a better way than we used to uh, until this point right now. So I wanted to start with, with a short story or introduction. Um, so this is an entrance to an exhibition in Canada, in Toronto, called um, Little Canada, where a bunch of people got together and in 10 years they built like a small Canadian cities like Toronto, Montreal, uh, Vancouver, um, like the miniature versions of, of these cities. And it's, it's really an awesome exhibition. Uh, it, it's a pretty large one. And uh, the thing that I wanted to point out is this is like the entrance, the first when you arrive there. And there's a big greed screen with like different languages and um, like saying hello in, in different languages. And the one thing that I've noticed uh, as a Croatian, uh, it's not very common to see, you know, um, hello in Croatian language in Canada or like anywhere outside of, of Croatia, really. And I saw like this big uh, dobrodošli, it's a hello in Croatian. And it felt, I don't know, it felt kind of good, you know, uh, being welcomed in your own language. Uh, it, felt, it felt nice and warm, so I was very nicely surprised by that. And so, just like that, you know, uh, saying hello um, in, in different languages, so this is like a hello world. Uh, please don't, uh, this is like, I think this got translated by Google Translate or ChatGPT, so <laughs> if there's something wrong, like please don't <laughs> yell at me. Um, so, you know, you, when you're localizing your apps, I see some people laughing, that's probably because I wrote Hello World, sorry for Canada. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so, you know, saying hello uh, in different languages uh, when you're uh, building your iOS apps or or any apps for the Apple platform, like macOS apps, watchOS apps, uh, it can make a huge difference for the user, you know? Just, I remember that feeling that when I saw uh, hello in Croatian, when I was entering that uh, exhibition I saw previous. So that's how your users would also feel, you know, when they, um, when they see that there is their native language in the app that they want to use. Because not everyone in the world speaks English. Um, in fact, there's, there's, there's a lot of people who don't speak English whose, um, whose native language is not English. And even if they do speak English, a lot of people actually choose to use the app in their native language. So, some fun facts that I found on the website called Ethnolog. Um, it's a very popular website that like, has different statistics on different languages in the world, how many spoken languages and things like that. So, there are 7,117 known spoken languages in the world, um, which is a pretty big number. Although, uh, <laughs> it's uh, like a little side note, like 90% of them are spoken by less than 100,000 people, which is, you know, when you say it like that, it's not really kind of a big deal. And there are at least 3,688 with an established writing system. So even though there are 7,000 uh, languages that are spoken, not all of uh, them can be, have a writing system, so you can't localize all of them, right? So this website also has like a top five languages, like total speakers uh, in the world. So if you see uh, top one language is English, and English is used 
pretty much in most countries, I would say, as like a business language. Um, and there's a lot of people, you know, who do business with the states. And so it's kind of um, good to know to speak English, right? And there's 1.45 billion people uh, speaking English, not necessarily, you know, their native language. Second one is Mandarin Chinese with 1.12 billion. Then we have Hindi, uh, Spanish, and then Arabic on the fifth um, place. Now, if we take a look at the native speakers, it's a little bit different, so they change places. So Mandarin Chinese is spoken natively by 1.3 billion people. Now, English is not on the first place anymore. There's more native speakers who speak Mandarin Chinese, and you know those people might choose to use your apps uh, in, in Mandarin Chinese rather than English. And then on the second place, we have Spanish as well. Still a large number of people. And then third would be English, and we have Arabic and Hindi. Just quite, quite, quite interesting. So, you know, localizing our apps um, makes them accessible and inclusive to folks, you know, who don't speak English. And there's a lot of people, I always remember my mom, because she always asked me, hey, Daniel, you know, I want to use this app, can you make it? <laughs> I was like, mom, I'm pretty sure that app like that already exists on the store. It's like, yeah, but it's in English, and I don't know how to speak English. <laughs> so um, she is a perfect example you know, of someone who might use the app, but would rather prefer to use it in like Croatian, her native language. So we're going to start and take a look at how we used to do localization in Xcode 15 and before, uh, all the Xcode versions below it. And then we're going to see how um, we're going to use it now. So let's take just a quick look. So this is a, an app called PosturePal by, uh, by Jordi Bruin. Uh, he's an awesome indie developer. And he always makes sure to localize his apps um, in, in as many languages as he can. I participated in localizing this one in Croatian. It was, it was quite an interesting experience. So as you can see, uh, I believe in starting iOS 13, um, people are able to choose a language specific to the app. So if they are using, I don't know, um, their phone in English, um, they might choose to use a specific app in a different language. So here you can see there are quite a lot of languages. So in order to localize um, a string, um, there are a few options you know you can you can do. You can do um, write a localized string key. So this is either Swift UR or UI kits or even um, storyboards can be localized as well. And you can also use NS localized string um, to have your string localized. Uh, you can add a comment to a string, you know, this is for uh, when you send these strings to your translators so they know the context that the string needs to be localized into because different languages have different uh, context. And we're going to see that a little bit later. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So when you are uh, localizing an app um, in Xcode um, and you search for a string, you get a template. Um, so you can choose a strings file or strings dictionary file. Uh, both um, depending on what you're doing, right? And then this is how the strings file looks like. It's usually called localizable.strings. It's just a file that has a lot, of, um, a lot of strings depending on the size of your app. And then you have some comments, and then you can you know, translate in different languages. And then the strings dictionary file uh, looks like this. Horrible, if you ask me. It's really horrible. Uh, it looks like an info PLS file, but it's still like trying to figure out what the hell is happening here. And then when you open the localizable folder, uh, depending on how many languages you have, it looks like this. It's just a bunch of uh, L project files, and you have to click every file. Uh, of course, in Xcode, they're all you know uh, lined up, but it's still, this is a lot of folders, a lot of files. But now, starting with Xcode 15, um, it brings us something called String Catalog. And it's really cool. It's also back deployable to any OS. So if you are using Xcode 15, it doesn't matter uh, what your iOS, macOS um, you know, version is, it's back deployable. It's super easy to 
um, merge your old uh, into do to create a string catalog from your old localizable strings file. It's just like a one button, uh, and it automatically moves everything to string catalog. Of course, there might be some things you have to like uh, make sure it's working correctly, but it, it usually is. And also, as you can see here, this is the official uh, developer Apple website. Uh, they put a note here saying that in Xcode 15 and later, um, string catalogs are the recommended way to localize strings. And the earlier uh, version in Xcode, um, you still use strings and strings dicks file because, uh, of course, string catalogs are not available. But when you can, you know, and use Xcode 15, move over to string catalog. So we're no, yeah, so as you can see here, um, this is Xcode 15. Um, strings file and strings dictionary files are now marked as legacy. So Apple is pushing you to, to use a string catalog. So this is how you create a new string catalog. And you know, we're no, we're no strangers to catalogs. We already have an asset catalog, a syncing catalog, sticker catalog, different catalogs for different things, depending on what you need them to. And now we have another one called string catalogs. And it's just uh, an XE strings file. I'm going to show you how it looks like in Xcode and how to work with it. Um, in, the, in, the, in the background, it's actually a JSON file, which you'll also see a little bit later. OK, so I'm doing something that people usually, I'm going to do a live demo. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, I need the support. <laughs> OK, all right. Um, I know it's a little bit small, and I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to zoom in uh, what I'm pointing, so you should all be able to see everything. OK, so this is a small quite simple app that I made for this occasion. Uh, it's here. And it just, OK. It's called Librium, just a random name. Um, a few strings scattered around. It's like you can order you know, books. Um, you can see how many orders you have in progress, how many books are already delivered. Um, like there's one book on today. I ordered a book today. Uh, you can cancel an order in progress. There's three books. There's five books um, already delivered. And as you can see, it's not localized uh, because it says one book, three book, five book, which is not correct, right? And then you can like start a new order, um, choose how many books you can buy with a stepper, uh, cancel, buy, and tap to learn more. Just um, a few strings. Uh, that I want to show you like how to localize. There's some specific use cases here. OK, it's quite a simple app, so it's just going to show you some code a little bit so you can see. OK, command, let's zoom in a little bit more. OK, all right. Um, it's just one big file with a lot of things, so I wasn't really, you know, <laughs> trying to make this modularize or anything. Okay, so, all right. So you can notice that, you know, I have text, um, text components in UI, um, just you know, regular uh, text strings. I do not, I did not move my strings in a specific like constant file, which is what you would usually do. Um, but you know, it's all just in there in, in code. Um, if you notice right here, uh, there is a text that says, uh, with a property that says verb, verb, verbatim. Um, what this means is, so since this is uh, a name of the app, I do not want to have that uh, localized. So on any language, I wanted to say Librium. So that is how you can make sure that this does not get localized by putting a verbatim. And then you see there's a text, and then I have a comment. Um, 
And this is, as I said, to help your, to help your translators know uh, what exactly are they translating. And I've been on that side, so I can tell from the personal experience what it means to get a bunch of strings when you have absolutely no uh, context on what exactly are you trying to localize. And it's, it's easier a little bit in English, but it's actually quite hard uh, to know that in, in Croatian. And Croatian is a very hard language. Um, we're different. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how pluralization works in Croatian. It's, uh, it's quite an adventure. Yeah, you see text orders, uh, there's some comments. Um, I just hard coded these values, forgive me. <laughs> I have some like card view, uh, button, you see button, and there's just regular string in there. And then I have a few other files. You see here, I have some uh, string concatenation, just in a regular text. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's my code. So now we're going to add a string catalog. And string, OK, string catalog. Going to go next. Let's hope this works. OK. And it's right there, if you can see. I'm going to zoom a little bit. This is a cool feature that I learned today. <laughs> it says, you know, see, localizable right there. And this is a lo your localizable file that's going to hold all languages and all your strings. So because I created it and it's something new, you can see right there it says empty string catalog. So how it works is, when I build the app, it's going to get populated. Magic. <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, no more manually writing your strings, uh, making sure they are there. Um, and as you, can see, you, as you saw my code, right, there's just regular strings. Um, I have a string in, in a button, just title. And it picks up all those uh, strings because um, the they are all uh, localized, localizable, right? Uh, is this going to work? Yeah, you see right there uh, in the initializer, they are all localized string keys, so they're all automatically localizable. OK, so this is how it looks like. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is English, uh, which is like the default uh, language. Um, you can set different default languages, but uh, that's usually the one. And these are all of my, uh, my strings, as you can see. Um, this is that. Uh, this is the num number right there. Um, book, buy. You see, I have two, um, two cancel strings that I declared um, as, as localizable strings in the code. Uh, it's the same word in English, but it can mean different words in, in languages like Croatian. It's not the same word. Uh, that makes it a little bit complex to like localize when you don't have a comment saying, OK, what exactly is this? So this is an order in progress, and this is order new. So that makes it much easier. As you can see, uh, here we have the status on that home page, um, and it has like and it has two arguments, so you can also localize that. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So, if you want to add more languages, um, you can click here on this plus button, and you're going to see there are a lot of a lot of languages. There's even more, uh, a lot. I mean, you don't have to like don't localize in all of them and. Some languages have different uh, versions. Um, it's a lot. So um, most common languages probably to localize an app would be first English, of course, and then probably Spanish, uh, French, Italian, um, maybe like even you saw like uh, Mandarin, Chinese, Hindu, Arabic, uh, which are uh, which are more prominent, which are more used by by other folks. Okay, so I'm going to add a Croatian here because I'm sorry, I don't know French, so I'm going to use a Croatian here, and you're just going to have to trust me it's correct. <laughs> okay, so when I add a new language, um, and you can see right here, 
is just being added in the list in Xcode here, and it says 0% because I have not localized anything. So you can see here how, how, what is the percentage of localized strings. And also, um, right here on the right side, as you can see, there is something called state. And there are a few different states. So because I just added this um, Croatian localizable uh, file, it says new. Um, and it's new because I haven't done anything yet. Uh, but there are also other, um, other that we're going to see there. If you change a string in your code, uh, it will say stale. Or if you change it here, it's going to say needs a review. Um, so it's going to let you know uh, what's going on so you know. And this is uh, for a developer, you know, during development. This is not something for like uh, translators uh, because it's, it's something uh, in Xcode. Okay, all right. So what I have right here is the number of books, right? So I'm going to just try to visualize this a little bit in the keynote uh, to show you. Okay, so in English language, uh, it's one book. So when you're localizing um, and making sure the pluralization is correct, it's one book and then for everything else, it's books. You append the S at the end. You know, three books, four books, many books, right? Hello Croatia is, uh, well, a little bit different. So this is uh, a book in Croatian. Um, so you have one book and then two, three, and four. It ends with an E. And then five, six, seven ends with an A again. <laughs> Uh, but uh, 11 to uh, 19, it's all A. Uh, and then when you come to 20, uh, it goes back to being A and E. Uh, yeah. I wonder how I learned Croatian. <laughs> it's, it's very different. And I'm sure there are other languages, you know, who, uh, who do the same thing. Um, OK. So that is something that I wanted to you know, show you, visualize to you. and. String catalog actually made sure uh, that is implemented. Uh, Apple engineers who worked on it, right? So when I click here, um, vary by plural, it's actually going to show me in Croatian uh, uh, localization for a single book, for a few books, which is two, three, and four, and then for other, which is uh, the other. So all three possible uh, localizations. So. You know, um, if I click here, so it's like this. And then back to this. <laughs> yeah, try to code that in. <laughs> okay, so that's it. So very by plural. And the same thing here, you know, when you so it's this very by plural, it's going to show one few another. And it's going to show you that for different, you know, every language is a little bit different, so it's covered for all of the languages. And I'm glad I speak Croatian because I can show you this. It's really cool. Okay, then we have uh, a by, which is just a uh, regular, and then we come to this specific use case, which is a cancel button. Now, a cancel button is, so we, we saw in the app, so there's order in progress, so we can cancel an order in progress, and there's uh, a new order which you can cancel as well cancel that screen. Um, in English, it's cancel, cancel. Uh, but in Croatian, it's actually not. Uh, it's two different words that mean the same thing, but not really. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little bit hard to explain, but it really depends on the context. So it's two different words. So that's why you can't have like um, one word, you know, cancel. Uh, but that's something, you know, if you give your strings to um, translators uh, who speak that language, they will tell you that probably. If you give them enough context, you know what is going on. Uh, if you give them just a string, uh, string uh, you know, and they're going to tell you, hey, I can't use this, I need this, and then you'll have to you know, adjust your code like that. And then you can see right here, there is a comment that I wrote. You know, um, This is a button for a cancel order in progress on the home view, and this is a cancel button for a current order before placing it. So it helps the translators. 
And now you can see here, right, uh, the state change. So when I change the, when I added the plural, um, it marked them all as green because I changed and that's okay. But here, because I added pluralization, but I haven't changed anything, it says needs review. So what you can do is just um, click here on this one and mark as reviewed, and it's going to get that green check mark. And you can do that for all of them. Okay. All right. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you as well is this one. So we have two numbers in here. <laughs> Croatian languages, yeah, fun. Uh, what we have to do here, so you can vary by plural on the first argument or on the second, or on both, which is quite cool. And in this case, um, the translation in for Croatian for the first part, uh, status in progress, is the same for doesn't matter how many books, is there one or 20 books? But it's different for the second argument where the book is delivered. Uh, there's three different uh, versions of the word. And then you can just, you know, uh, take the second argument and just change it here. What you want to do is just delete everything after the second argument and just add here, you know, whatever the translation is. OK, and one other thing um, to show is this tab to learn more. Now, on iOS uh, devices, or maybe on watchOS as well, um, you tap uh, to learn more, right? But on MacBook, um, you don't tap your <laughs> screen, no matter how many times you try. Uh, it's a click to, to learn more, right? So Apple engineers also uh, took that into consideration, and so there is something called vary by device. As you can see, there's iPhone, iPod, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV. Um, there's also Mac, so I'm going to click Mac. And so if I'm developing this app on both like uh, iPhone, iOS, and Mac OS, uh, I can actually make sure that this says um, click to learn more. It's pretty cool. And then, as you see, as I'm typing here, these states are changing. Um, and then, okay, one final thing um, I'm going to just show you. So, I'm going to change this string in the code and just completely change the string. Append, there's no such thing as too many books, right? And build again. So every time you build, uh, it makes sure to update everything. So if there's anything that needs review or something that's like stale or, or, or different things, uh, you know, it's going to tell you that. Um, also, there are a few bugs in this uh, in String Cattle, of course, and Xcode is fairly new. It just got out like last week, right? Um, so this was supposed to be marked as stale, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, OK. Well, you just have to trust me. It says stale, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it, you know. Um, and then when you want to um, give this to your translators, it's just a uh, strings file. Open it in source code, uh, just a JSON, right? Uh, and you can see right here. That's how it works. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. And um, so, if you want to learn more, of course, the best uh, first stop would be to watch the Discover String catalogs, the WWDC 23 video. Um, it's really awesome, um, and they explain everything, um, even the migration from the old uh, way to the new one. Um, I really suggest watching it. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So we can move to the Q&A. All right, uh, many questions. Um, so actually, the, the I think the most interesting one is how the hell do you zoom in your screen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, actually, I, f I learned that today. Uh, it's an accessibility feature in, ex in, uh, in Mac OS. Uh, there's like a zoom option. Uh, and then there are different ways to like zoom, but the, the default one is like holding a control and just uh, swiping on, your, uh, on the touchpad. It's, it's really cool. Nice. I'll be using that more now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I learned it today. You know, you learn something new every day. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, when using uh, localization, there's many apps who use uh, third-party frameworks to uh, download uh, the localization. For example, there's localize or phrase. Do you know if we can already use and support uh, directly uh, the format of file here? I haven't tried it, so I'm not, I'm not sure. I know, for example, at work, we use sorcery to like ge 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 generate all of the files. <laughs> um, I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure, honestly, if, um, if it will work. But as long as you have, you know, um, localize of the strings files or any types of uh, that strings files, which I think most of, even if you ha use third-party frameworks should have that, I think the migration should be, um, should be easy. Um. Can you use this uh, also for uh, I mean, having different um, languages for different uh, build configuration, for instance? Sorry, different translations for different uh, build configurations. Different. Yeah, I think you have. You can um, just uh, in in Xcode there's settings. Uh, you can make sure that's all work. Yeah, it can be. Right. And considering you've been to the other side of. Uh, translation and uh, doing the localization for the developer. Do you have like some best practice to give us, for example, I don't know, if the app is really large and we want to have some modules or I don't know, to better make it, uh, to make it really easier for a translator to work with it? Um, good question. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> there's like, I would say there's like easy way really because what translator get, gets is just a bunch of strings. Uh, probably um, something that uh, the developer can do better is make sure that every string has a comment. Uh, even simple strings, you saw like a cancel button, you know, might be um, something that you don't really consider something as a oh, cancel button, you know. It's, I don't, you don't really need to describe a cancel button, right? But in fact, you saw that you actually do for some languages, so just make sure every, every string has, has a comment in there, uh, because that really helps. And is there like some exception? Because I know in my code I've made some pretty standard OK translation, and at some point, is there, is there a, any any use of really simple word like OK or cancel, we don't expect them to have different translations. But should we have a different localization for every use or? It's hard to know that, right? Because like, I mean, I, I speak like uh, Croatian and English, um, but I don't know anything about other languages. And I'm sure there are like languages who are even more complex than Croatian. Um, so I would say it's maybe the best idea would be, you know, to, to have all those um, like a separate strings and just make sure you add the context to a translator. Uh, it can be the same string, but it doesn't have to be, right? Um, okay, so um, I have another question which is a more, uh, bit more awkward. You know what, what day is it today? Who asked that? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I, 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 I did. Do I have to say? <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. There was the final. <laughs> That's a very cringy moment of the conference. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I have to blow it. <laughs> Thank you. We are extremely sorry for this. <laughs> we know it's stressful, but yeah. <laughs> this is a big cake. <laughs> we will eat it backstage. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank I'm leaving with the cake, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.